Good evening, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is um, May 26, 2021. So I've, um, I've made a video a while back of a rapture that I had, a rapture dream that I had. Since then, I've had um, three, four other dreams. Um, but I didn't, I decided not to make a video on the other three because I wasn't really sure if they were from God or if they were the enemy or, you know, I'm not, I wasn't really sure, um, because the dreams kind of didn't make sense to me, but, uh, well, just the way that it happened, but, um, well, last night I was in my prayer closet and I was praying to God and asking him to give me another rapture dream or just give me any dream um, of something that he wants me to know or just just anything and quite frankly I wasn't expecting him to answer me that quick because I like I said I've been praying for another dream but he hasn't given me one but this morning right before I woke up I had a dream. Now I'm not claiming this is from God, so you know, take it, take it, you know, with a grain of salt. I mean, if if it means something to you, then fine. But I'm only going to share this because I feel like it's necessary, and um, I feel like the Lord is telling me to share it. But like I said, I'm not claiming that this is from God. But I, I believe with my own heart that it is. Because for one, I asked for the dream. And two, it happened. <laughs> Alright, so this is how the dream went. It was me, my husband, and my kids. We were in some kind of building. I have no idea where we were at, why we were there, or... I'm not sure. All I know is my kids were laying down as though they were sleeping. And my husband was in there and I was inside. And for some reason, I just had the feeling to go outside. I don't know if I just went outside to see what was going on out there. I don't know why I even went outside. But I went outside and I looked up and I saw a, a spaceship. Well, I started scrambling to grab my phone and turn the camera on and capture it because I wanted to show my husband because I didn't want him to think I was crazy for seeing a spaceship in the sky and well by the time I got my phone out I was having trouble getting the camera on the spaceship flew away so I ran inside and I was I was trying to tell my husband what I had seen of course you know he's looking at me like I'm crazy well, I went back outside, and when I went back outside, I'm thinking the spaceship came back. I can't remember exactly, but um, but I was looking, I started looking up into the sky, and I started noticing these planes. They looked like they were white, as though they were like normal planes, but in my dream, they were like military planes. Or that's at least that's what I was thinking in my head, and um, then I started seeing helicopters flying everywhere. Like it, it just started getting chaotic in the sky, and so I, I freaked out and um, I started looking across the street. And when I, I noticed that there were like zombie-like people climbing up the building. And I freaked out and I started panicking and I ran in because I knew something wasn't right. Some, we were either going to war or I don't know what was going on, but I was, I was freaking out. And I went inside and I was trying to tell my husband what was happening. And next thing I know, I looked over at the window and there was this lady, this zombie like lady, popped her head up and she got inside somehow. And I'm sitting there, uh... I ran into the room where my children were and I was yelling at them to get up and get grab their phones and, and to come on. We didn't have time. There were zombies everywhere. We had to get out of there. And um, 
so I went back in. we went I went back into the room where my husband was and he was kind of like bent over I came I don't even know what he was doing I think he was leaning over the table or something I don't, I'm not sure but this zombie like lady that got into the the building that we were in she went to go bite him and when she did I I yelled at him I said it's behind you and he grabbed he, he I don't know why I'm dreaming this but he grabbed her by the throat and whatever he did, she stopped, and then I woke up. Well, like I said, it's, it's a very strange dream, and I don't know why I dreamed it like that. But what I kind of got out of it was God was showing me that the first part of the dream was um, the, the spaceship. He was confirming with me that there will be an alien um delusion that they're going to use aliens as a, a cover-up for the rapture and also or it it could be just an invasion of it I, i'm not sure but this the middle part of the dream um the planes and all that i feel like maybe the lord was showing me that we were about to go to war which we all we do know that based on the bible you know nation will rise up against nation so i believe that the um there is war coming and then of course the last part of the dream i don't believe that there's going to be zombies like you see in the walking dead uh show but i believe that whoever takes the mark of the beast and whoever um i believe that it's already here my honest opinion but um I believe whoever has taken it when the angel when in revelation where it talks about the angel opening up the seal and whoever had took the mark of the beast um hold on let me pull that up and give the exact scripture because i don't want to um let's see I want to make sure I give you the right the scripture for it of what I'm trying to say. Um, forgive me, I'm still learning the Bible. Okay, here we go. So, Revelation 16, verse 2. It says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell... A noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image so like I said I believe that the Lord was showing me that the people who have gotten this mark something's gonna happen to them um, they're gonna either be demon possessed or you know it's, it's gonna be something they're gonna be they're not gonna be human well they're gonna be human but um, They're going to have behaviors as a, a possessed person. So, um, so I'm not sure. I mean, you know, people keep, you know, and even if you look on the CDC website, they have preparation for uh, a zombie apocalypse. So, um, apparently they know something that we don't. But like I said, you know, I believe that That all this is about to happen. You know, I, I believe the rapture is about to take place. I believe that the mark of the beast is, is it's already here. It's just not being forced yet. And I believe anybody who takes the hokey pokey, the jab, you know what I'm talking about. I believe that those are going to be the ones who are going to, whenever the... Uh, uh, one of the seven angels that pour the the vials of wrath of God upon the earth, I believe that that's going to be part of it. <sighs> so there you have it. Um, like I said, you know, this was just a dream that I had this morning, and you know, 
I'm giving you what I think it means. You know, it's not a, I'm not a prophet. I don't know, you know, I'm not a, the Lord doesn't give me visions every single day or dreams every single day. So I actually had to ask for this one. Um, but I just want you to know that the way that I interpreted it, it, it just seemed like he was showing me, um, those three events, but I don't know if they're all going to happen at the same time or if it's just going to, he was just showing me all three events in the same dream. But either way, it's pretty, pretty terrifying. And I hope that if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he is the Son of God. He died on the cross for our sins. And he paid it all so that we could have the gift of eternal life. And mostly so we won't be damned to hell. But guys time is running out um everyone i've ever seen on youtube all the Christ christians that i see or are hear from or they all feel that this is the end we are living in the last days and you know the bible tells us that we will know the season when it gets here and we the season is here guys it's there's way things are just unfolding quickly every single day I, I get on my my phone every, my ipad every day to to see what's going on and to keep up with everything and israel that's our main focus right now because they are literally surrounded by um by people wanting to attack them and we know of the ezekiel war and i just believe that that's that prophecy is about to be fulfilled i believe that um damascus is getting ready to be destroyed because i just learned today that um they have moved nuclear bombers into syria which is north of israel and basically russia um uh Turkey and Iran they're all pretty much in cahoots with each other and they all well I can't remember the guy's name that's in uh, Turkey but he told Putin today that Israel needs to pay so basically they're they're getting ready to attack Israel and we all know that when people mess with God's people God's holy city yeah he's they're gonna full, feel um they're gonna experience God's wrath and I believe that that's gonna be the fulfillment of Damascus being destroyed because they actually have those nuclear bomber planes or whatever right there in the area of Damascus well they're getting ready they're it's in that vicinity so <laughs> i'm sorry i'm i'm trying to talk here i'm i'm not really good at making video so you please just you know forgive me and i'm trying you know I've, i'm not a video person i don't like to make videos but the lord you know i feel like it was put on my heart that i need to share this experience this dream because it could be significant to what may happen and you know it's just I just wanted to get it out there so that people are aware that many of us are having dreams um I'm not claiming to be a prophet I'm not claiming to know everything I don't know every single thing about the bible I don't think anybody does um but I know enough that um the lord has been coming to me this past year you know I got saved a year ago well right before right right when the pandemic first happened is when I first got saved and since then he's he's been literally I've 
he has crammed so much stuff into my mind in the past year and I've learned so much just just in one year and I you know of course I did I've read the whole Bible but I don't remember every single thing I read that's a lot to memorize but I do know quite a bit of well I pretty much know Revelation and all the important things <laughs> that's taking place right now but and like I said I've had three other dreams two were rapture I've had three rapture dreams one dream about Jesus um and then of course this last one that I had this morning that one was crazy um I've been wanting, I have been wanting to share my other dreams, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure. The first dream I had, I know I felt like was from God because of how real it felt, but the second two rapture dreams I had, I wasn't really sure about just for the fact that the way it happened, um, I guess I can just share it with you, you know, just take it what you will you know if it may not be from God but it may be so the okay so if you haven't watched my first rapture video it's on my YouTube channel um, you can go watch that one but I'm just gonna get right to the second and third rapture dream and then I'll tell you the dream about uh, Jesus and like I said I'm not claiming this is all from God I'm just claiming that these are dreams and visions that I've had. Um, so my second dream that I had, I was, I was at somebody's house and my, one of my daughters and my other daughter's friend was there. And those were the only two people that were there for some reason. Well, I went outside and I looked up in the sky and I noticed that there were these like glowing blue lights that were floating in the sky and I kept staring at them wondering what they were you know I couldn't figure it out first what they were and then next thing I know I started it started dawning on me that hey wait a minute wait a minute and I saw that there were like spiritual bodies attached to these glowing balls so immediately I thought oh no this is the rapture you know so I looked over towards the sky where these these spiritual beings were flying to and I saw that the the sky was opened up and there was this humongous when I say humongous this was like bigger than Goliath you know this 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 thing was big it was in the sky but it looked like a, a soldier like like a um like them old timey armor armor suits that they wore back in the old days you know to fight in uh the royal, how do you say it? The royal um, armor, the the hard the hard armor. Anyway, so this being was in the sky, and that's what it had on, and it was moving really fast, like it was in a hurry. And the next thing I know, it closed the sky up, and I ran inside to tell my daughter what I had just seen. And then I woke up. And the reason why I don't know if that was from God. Because that was kind of a weird. Um, God. I just don't think the Lord has. Uh, I don't know. I, it, it was very strange. But anyway. So the third dream that I had. Um, now this one. It was pretty significant up until the very last part and this is why I didn't know I didn't know if it was from God or not and I even questioned God and I was wondering and that's one of the reasons why I haven't told this dream but so take it as you will you know you may be able to interpret it better than me I don't know um but the dream started out I was outside it was dark and there was two people sitting beside me and I we were watching the sky and I don't know why we were watching the sky but 
there were some weird things happening in the sky. It was like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, there was just some weird stuff happening. And then I started noticing there were angels, but they were not like the typical solid angels that you would see. It's, they were translucent almost and kind of colorful. And anyway, so I'm watching them and I got asphyxiated on one particular angel, almost as though I knew that was my angel or something. It was very strange. And next thing I know, um, I'm, I'm staring at this angel and it, all of a sudden I started seeing these yellow glowing balls start coming, going everywhere as though they were going to specific people. And next thing I know, one specific glowing ball comes to me. And as soon as it touched me in the blink of an eye, just like the Bible said, I was off the earth and I was in this room. And this is the part that I didn't understand and it kind of got weird and confusing to me. But so all up until that point, it felt like, okay, this is the rapture, you know, yay, I'm going to heaven. So, but when I... In the, blinking of, in the blink of an eye, when I was off the earth, I was in this room, which was a spaceship room. And the only reason why I knew it was a spaceship was because the door was open for some reason. I don't know why, because they say you can't breathe in space, which I don't, I don't believe in space anyway. But anyway, um, so I'm looking out this door and I could see the engine to the spaceship. But there was a, me and a group of people in there. And I was like, we made it. We made it in the rapture. We're, we're in heaven. <laughs> um, and then my, my nephew was actually sitting in the room with me. And I was like, oh, you made it, Tristan. Oh, I said, you must be reading your Bible. <laughs> and I don't know why I would, you know, said it like that. But it was almost like I was surprised to see him there. Well... Then I tried to look, because I know that I've seen, I've heard of people having dreams when they tried to look out, uh, when they got raptured up and they, God showed them what was happening on earth. So in my dream, I was trying to do that. I was trying to look out the door to see if I could see earth and what was happening on earth, but I couldn't see anything. All I could see was an engine. And then I woke up. Well... Like I said, I don't know why the end of the dream was in a spaceship. That's I kept asking God, why? If this dream is from you, why were you showing me that? Anyway, so those are the two um, rapture, the three rapture dreams. Well, I get, the first one I told you to go watch. Now, the dream I had about Jesus. This one, I dreamed a whole dream, but... I cannot remember any of the dream but one part. And the part that I remember was Jesus was in front of me. And all I remember was seeing a white robe. And I had my face on his chest. I was laying almost like I was laying my head on his, his chest. Like he was comforting me. And I remember the feel of the robe. It felt like wool. I mean, it was rough feeling. It was kind of like a rough material. And... I think because you know like I started waking up and as I was waking up I thought I heard him say I thought he kissed me on top of my head and, and I thought I heard him say I'm coming soon but I'm not at 100% for sure because like I said I was waking up and it took me a second to realize what I had just dreamt when I first woke up but, um, so those are all the dreams. Um, now I've had a couple of visions, not sure what they mean. Um, not sure why I even had these visions because two of them were of people. And then one of them was of a word. And I don't know why I had these visions because I did look up the one of the word and I kind of understand that one, I think. But so my my first vision that I had was it was very quick and, and when I say it was quick like I wasn't even asleep I was kind of like how in between sleep and awake if that makes any sense you know how can you like doze off but you're not like sleeping sleeping so um 
I saw this man. He was wearing regular clothes. He had glasses on. Um, he was kind of skinny looking. And he had a crown on his head. Like a gold crown. Like a king's crown. And he had a like a king, a royal robe on his shoulders and that's all I saw and I went and you know I snapped out of it and I you know I, I was like what was I even asked myself I was like what was that because <laughs> I did not understand what I was seeing um now I can give you my opinion like what I think I thought I saw because it kind of dawned on me like weeks later or a few months later that um I might have been seeing Bill Gates that might have been Bill Gates that I saw but I don't know like I said I'm I'm not even sure if that was from the Lord so these are just things that I'm seeing I hope that it was from God showing me something but if not then you know it's it is what it is I it was just these dreams and visions that I've had they they're there they're real but you know to me and I've had them but whether or not they are from God is I don't know now um the uh second vision I had it was of the word attitudes and what I saw was a yellow background and the word attitudes was in the middle of it it was very strange and I saw this word and I and I you know I was like same thing I was like what in the world was that what why am I seeing a word in my head like it's one thing to see a person or, or a vision of something but seeing a word so I actually looked it up I googled it and how it relates to the Bible biblically and it said something about um our mind and our spirit so I was just wondering if the Lord was trying to show me that we need to change our attitudes and you know or just check our attitudes i don't know like literally i don't know i have no idea why i saw this um so then the third the third vision was very quick just like the, the other two it was very quick i saw a girl she was um she had blonde hair and she was smiling at me and I have no idea who that was, why I saw it, but it was really quick. And like I said, it was in between sleep. I wasn't, well, I wasn't even asleep. I just had my eyes closed and I was just like in deep thought and thinking about God and everything. And that just popped in my, that came to my mind that that girl came into my, my vision. Um... So, if you know what, if you think you know what it can mean, or, you know, guys, this is my prayer closet. You, you see this. I'm in my prayer closet. But, these are my necklaces that I make. Yeah, this is what the Lord has been having me to do, is to make these necklaces and put the gospel in it and give it out to, just to random people. Hopefully somebody's life will be saved but <laughs> I'm sorry I talk so much I'm not really used to making videos so if this video is long um, I apologize um, I've <sighs> I've had a lot happen to me in the past year so I'm and I don't really know how to, it's, it's overwhelming I don't really know how to take it um, I just know that the Lord has been speaking to me in different ways. Um, dreams and visions, I think, is one way. And also, um, I see numbers all the time. I've seen a lot of other Christians who see numbers. And I've even kept questioning God, and, and I've even rebuked it because I'm afraid, you know, I don't want to follow anything demonic. So, I rebuke it all the time. <laughs> And apparently it's, 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 it's God because, you know, I keep seeing them. So, um, but he did confirm with me the number 11 twice. And the first time was 
through Psalms 91. And so when I first started seeing 1111 or 111, I wouldn't, I didn't understand it. Like I thought the Lord was trying to show me something or like, or show me a scripture. And so I had, I had talked to God one day and I was like, Hey, you know, what does this mean? What are you trying to show me? And, um, excuse me. So I didn't, I didn't hear anything or whatever from him then, but then, um, one day I was sitting there and I was, I, th I don't know why, but the thought crossed my mind. I was like, Hey, I wonder what it's like. Uh, what the signs are when you, your guardian angels around you or one of God's holy angels are around you. Um, and so before I looked this up now, I had my Bible open and I was writing out Psalms 91 because I it, it's one of my favorite, for some reason, it's my favorite book, um, chapter. And, for, and, and also 91 is significant to my name in the Geometria, I don't know how to say that word right, but um, the number value of my name is 91 in the standard form. So that was kind of interesting. But um, so I'm sitting there and I'm writing out 91, Psalms 91, and I stopped on 10. No joke. I stopped on 10. And then that thought crossed my mind about looking up, oh, what's the signs of your guardian angel or when you have angel, holy angels around you? So I looked it up. And the first thing that popped up was seeing the numbers, the repeat, repeated numbers, 1111. I about fell out on the floor. So after I was kind of in shock of that, I turned back to what I was writing and I went to go to the next line, which is Psalms 91 11, which is 11. And it says that, um, that he gives his angels charge over us. I was floored. I was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, he couldn't have tied that together no more. Um, it, that was so perfectly put together the way he showed me that. Well, after that, um, of course, I started seeing other numbers, but that was the main one that I was wondering about. Well, then one day I was on YouTube and I seen something where these they were saying that you should be careful of repeated numbers because it could be demonic. So I started getting worried like, oh no, am I following the wrong thing? So of course, um, I prayed to, to God and I asked him, I said, Lord, if this is not of you, please show me. But, Lord, if this is you, if this is of you, God, if this is your number and you are showing me this number, can you please show me in a way that I would understand and know for sure that it is coming from you and that it is significant to you and that I'm not following anything de demonic? So, that following Sunday, I went to church and... I'm not joking. This blew me away. Okay, so I went inside the church. I sat down. And usually my pastor will go to different scriptures and different books of the Bible or whatever. But this son, this particular Sunday, he told us to turn to Mark 11, 1 through 11. I knew it was God. Right, I mean, I knew it was him just because he picked a time that he, or a place that the devil would not be able to enter. Well, the devil can't, I think the devil can enter. I'm not sure. But I believe that the church is a holy place and, you know, it came from him. So that was another confirmation that, that he was showing me that these, um, the number 11 is significant to him. So if you are a Christian and you keep seeing the number 11, just know that I believe it's from God. I believe that it's very significant to the end times. I believe it's very significant to his angels and just everything. Everything pertaining to God, I believe it's him. Um, I believe also that the 222 and the 444, 
I believe that has some significance to God too. I haven't figured out exactly what yet, but you know, as far as scripture goes, but I did, I did find this website that, um, gives scriptures that are linked to different numbers, like, uh, the triple, like even the double numbers, like double twos, double threes. But I am very skeptical about the double numbers because, um, you know, I, I'm not really quite sure, which I have, like I said, I've been rebuking these things and, um, but I don't know if, if the reason why it keeps coming back, if, if it's of God and he's just, you know, it's not going to go away because it's God, but it's like, I just, I see double numbers all the time and I see triple numbers all the time and, and it's gotten like every day now, like it's every day. I, I can't even look at the clock anymore without it being like 511, 522, 533, 544, 555. It's, it's like that every day. Um, but the weird thing was, was last night I had prayed that if it wasn't of him, the double numbers, to please, and I rebuked it and I cast any demons out that, that were any unclean spirits that were trying to trick me well the rest of the last night i didn't see any more double numbers and i didn't see no double numbers earlier today up until um i was looking up some i saw this tiktok about you know um about kenneth copeland and how he was he was talking in this weird language it's called uh enochian or something um, but basically he was trying to put a curse on the crowd. He wasn't speaking in tongues. He was speaking in Enochian language. Well, this guy that knows the, knows the language, he broke it down. And basically, so when I first got saved, I started seeing unicorns like everywhere, like everywhere. And I, at first I thought it was from God and, you know, and I started thinking, and, but I kept questioning, I kept wondering and I kept feeling like, like maybe it was something with it, you know, but I wasn't sure. So I looked it up in the Bible and I found the word unicorn in the Bible, but, um, so I thought, well, maybe, I'll, maybe I'm okay, you know? So I went ahead and bought a, a, a book bag and a purse that has the unicorns on it because I thought it was significant to God, honestly. But then today, like I said, I didn't see the double numbers up until this point. And so I saw a TikTok that, and this guy was breaking down this language, this thing that Kenneth Copeland was saying in, at one of his sermons. And what it's, what he, he said was the first person who sees a unicorn will bear the fruit of, of taking the mark of the beast. So you can best believe I freaked out. But as I was watching this and I was telling um, my, my brother's girlfriend this, uh, I looked up at the clock and there was a double digit number up there. So I'm not sure if God was showing me that, hey, yeah, this is satanic or, hey, you know, you know, a unit. I know that the unicorn was an animal or it was something related pertaining to an animal that God created. But if the devil is using the unicorn to try to like seduce people into idolatry, then that's pro that's a problem. And I believe that might've been what happened. And that's the reason why God showed me that today. Um, so that I can get rid of the bags and you can best believe I bagged them up and they are going to go bye-bye. So, um, but like I said, you know, it's, it's just strange. I, I don't know why I keep seeing the double numbers. You know, I rebuke it all the time. And, you know, I know, I know that my heart is with God because I spend all my time with him and not just that there, I have completely changed from the inside. I don't, I am not like I used to be. I don't, I'm not hateful. I'm not bitter. You know, I, I am just completely different. 
And that's how I know I carry the Spirit of God in me. And I have so much joy now. Even, even through suffering, I have joy. Because I know that He's my refuge. I know that He is my, my rock. And it is kind of scary, though, when you've got uh, the adversary always lurking around trying to devour you and trying to pull you away from God and you have to be extremely careful of what you follow and what you do and that's the reason why this whole number thing has really scared me um, because I didn't want to follow anything that was demonic but I believe that the Lord um, I believe he's showing people numbers um, to let us know that we are in the end times and the season. Um, I'm not the only person that sees these numbers. It's, you know, I've, I've discovered that there's a lot of Christians that do, including my mom. You know, she's another one. She sees the 11s and she sees threes. Me, I see a lot of numbers. I see 444, 555, um, 1111, 111. I see just all the double digit numbers on a clock so um i saw a matter of fact the other day i saw i saw the number four in the clouds and then i saw the number seven in the clouds i got a picture of the number four but i didn't get a picture of the seven because it floated away before i could get a picture of it but um so the lord is showing us things He's letting us know that he is near. And I believe he's coming any moment. Just any moment now he's gonna he's coming and to take his bride home. And that's why I've been keeping my lamp burning and my oil full because we don't know when he's coming. It could be any minute, any second. And I don't want to be found not doing the will of the Father. My desire is to serve him and and to love him and, and love people and he's guys if you're not saved trust me he has so much to offer you know I never knew what it was like to really be saved until I got saved like I didn't know the love that he gives like I never felt that and I used to walk around and claim to be a Christian like I used to say oh I'm a Christian even though I wasn't even really I wasn't born again I wasn't saved um so therefore I live my life however I wanted to now I've never been one to be into drugs I've never you know I've never been the party scene kind of person I've always spent my life at home taking care of my kids but I was still doing things that were unholy and against God. Cussing was one of them. And having hatred in my heart towards certain people, that was another one. I have a lot of things that I had going on in my mind and my heart. But when he say, when I really got saved and he entered into my heart and, and the Holy Spirit took over, I started desiring to be righteous and to be like him and, and to walk in, in his ways. And guys, I, I never thought, I never thought that I could feel this happy inside. Like, even when people are being hateful to me, it hurts me, of course. I mean, it's going to hurt anybody. But to just sit there and bite my tongue and to forgive them and... I have forgiven all all the people that I was ever against. And, you know, Jesus said that if we can't forgive others, he's not going to forgive us. So if you're a Christian and you're holding un unforgiveness in your heart, please, please check yourself. Please, you know, pray and ask God to remove it because, trust me, 
my ex my my husband's ex-wife was done some very bad things to her children and well she allowed bad things to happen to her children and then on top of that she de defended the guy that uh, that committed uh, offenses against her daughter I'm not going to get into all that because that's my daughter's privacy but just know that some things happened to my stepdaughter and her real mother defended the guy but anyway um so I was holding in a lot of hatred toward her because I felt like what kind of mother would do that to her children you know would would take the side of her boyfriend over her child so I had a lot of hatred toward her and I matter of fact I didn't want her anywhere near my house like <laughs> let's just say I was very hateful and because I didn't like the way she treated my my, my stepkids well she after I got saved um, thing some things happened and then the real mother finally left the boyfriend but God started convicting me of this he started telling me that I had to forgive I had to forgive her and I had to let it go and not just that we are supposed to do unto our enemies like if we see our enemy in, in need or see people that has hurt us or done wrong to us if they are in need we are to help them so that was the beginning of healing for me um the lord told me to help her out because she was in need of furniture when she moved into her place away from the boyfriend she was in need of furniture for for mckenzie she needed a bed for her and so basically God convicted me of this and I I changed I changed it I forgave her and I let it go and for the first time for the first time in 11 years that I've been with my husband we sat beside her at my my stepdaughter's graduation and we have I have even invited her to the graduation party which is this coming weekend but guys this is just a good example of forgiveness and if I can forgive this woman that I despised for so many years I know that we can all children of Christ can forgive people that have hurt us or people who have done wrong and the thing we need to do is pray for them. Pray for their salvation. Pray pray that they will seek the Lord and, you know, turn from their ways. I've, matter of fact, <laughs> the Lord has convicted me on all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I've had to go make things right. I, there was a lie. And I know this is kind of, this kind of went from my dreams to my testimony, but just so bear with me. I'm sorry. But <sighs> there was something that I hid for 20 years, 21 years, excuse me. And, you know, after getting saved, I, I didn't think about this and I, you know, I thought, you know, because I was saved, I, it was, it was fine. You know, yes, the Lord forgave me for all my sins, but he also wants us to make things right. Well, he told me I had to make this thing, this secret that I held in for 21 years. I had to make it right because I had lied to so many different people about this. And this was, this was effect, going to affect my firstborn. Um, 
her real father has never been in her life. And, you know, I, at the time when she was conceived, I didn't know who her dad was. There was two possible fathers, but I had, I hid one of the possibilities because I was afraid that my, one of my family members would find out because at the time, you know, I was a teenager, so, and we all have done some pretty messed up things in our life. And, you know, my cousin's boyfriend decided he wanted to come on to me. And so I ended up getting pregnant and I don't, but like I said, at the time I was dating somebody and this guy comes on to me when my cousin wasn't there. And, you know, I felt terrible. Like I felt so disgusting, you know, like that was the most horrific thing that I have ever done. Um, as far as, uh, hiding the truth, um, So for 21 years, I've hid this because I didn't want my cousin to find out that her boyfriend at the time, you know, we were just teenagers, but, you know, her boyfriend at the time, you know, came on to me. I was so ashamed of it. Well, the Lord told me that I had to tell the truth. I had to first tell the truth to my cousin and to let her know that I had lied to her about it and that my daughter's father may have been the guy that she had dated now she's not with this guy no more <laughs> she's actually with somebody that she's engaged to um and she's had kids since then you know but so I mean it, it was teenager things but you know it's also it was still deceiving somebody and the Lord made me tell the truth he made me tell the truth so I made it right I went and I told my cousin what had happened and asked for her forgiveness and of course she forgave me she told me she wasn't worried about it and you know but then I had to tell my daughter I had to tell my daughter the truth I didn't want to leave this world or 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 get left behind because I didn't make something right that God wanted me to make right so I made that right and I felt such a burden lifted off my chest you just don't know like it was like I am instantly felt like God was very pleased with me I felt so much joy in my heart after that you just don't realize when the Bible says that the truth will set you free it is absolutely 100% truth because I have been set free I have been set free from all my past. I have made things right with every person that I thought that I may have hurt. I have tried to make it right. Told them I'm sorry for the way I've ever treated them. Guys, we have to make... If you have anything hanging on in your life, please make it right. Please make it right. You know, the Lord wants to find us without blemish. And that means to not be hanging on to any kind of bitterness, any kind of hurt. Um, let go of your past and forgive those who have hurt you. And also apologize to the ones that you have hurt. Make it right, guys. Make it right. Trust me, you will feel so much better. And I'm going to tell you what. Even if that person that you try to make it right with doesn't accept at least you know that the Lord is seeing that you you attempted, you tried. And the Lord will be pleased with that. He just wants us to be truthful. He wants us to tell the truth and not deceive anyone. Guys, he's coming soon. And trust me, I, I have to keep re-examining re myself all the time. I have to keep checking my own self because I know that I make mistakes daily. I have to keep, you know, the Lord keeps bringing up things that I need to make right. 
And I know that I also know, so before you comment and say anything rude, I know also the devil likes to bring up your past and remind you of all the things you've done wrong. But this is not what this is. You know, the Lord told me I need to make these things right with these people. I don't want to leave earth knowing that I lied about something and then never told the truth about it. So that's the reason why the thing about my daughter, I had to, I had to get that out. I had to tell the truth about that. It was very important, not just for the sake of, you know, making things right, but because that is my daughter's life that I was playing with. And my daughter deserved to know who her possible dad is. So we, we all have done things in our past that are not good, that we're not proud of. And, you know, we have to seek God with our whole heart. And I'm ready to meet my father. I'm ready to meet him. I'm so excited to see him. I love him so much and I told him I surrendered my life to him a long time ago a year ago and I promised him I would live for him forever and I would I would always be bound to him I would never forsake him and I and I won't I don't care what I have to go through he has not only, he, sh he has shown me so many miracles of just healing. Just simple little, Lord, can you heal my heartburn? Lord, can you heal my side? Lord, can you heal my toothache? You know, he, God is good. He is good and he will, he, he is there for you when you ask. When you really believe with your whole heart that he's going to answer you, he does. And he works quickly sometimes, and then sometimes he works, it may take a day or so. It's all on his timing, though. But he will answer your prayer. So don't ever give up. Don't ever lose hope that he's not going to answer, because he will. It just takes time. Sometimes it may not be his appointed time to answer your prayer right then and there. Now, healing, I believe the Lord will heal you if you really seek and ask. But, I just, um, I just wanted you guys to know a little bit about me and my testimony. And, you know, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life that were not right. Fornicating was one of them. Um, you know, sex before marriage and... You know, I've been married. This is my third marriage. So, and I know divorcing is not very, God doesn't really like divorce either. Um, so I've, there's a lot that I've had to change and, you know, through the, through the Holy Spirit, you know, he's changed me. I, cause I know for sure I could have never done this on my own. I could have never got over, um, the things that people have done to me and I had bitterness holding you know holding in bitterness and not wanting to let go of the past you know all my insecurities gone just gone I don't care what people think of me anymore like I don't care if they think I'm crazy I'm the nut lady that sits in the closet all day long I, I, I don't care anymore I'm not here to please man. I'm here to please my God. And I am here. I'm supposed to love my neighbor. Do unto others as though Jesus would do unto us. Or Jesus wants us to, to treat people like he would treat us. And that's just the bottom line. We have to love each other. And one thing I want to get out while I'm telling you my whole life story. Um, there's something I've noticed and in the beginning I'm, I'm not saying that I didn't do this in the beginning because I did but I, I realized and I was convicted for this and 
I've noticed something. I've seen how Christians like to argue beliefs with other Christians. Now, our Bible tells us to encourage each other, not to rip each other down, not to argue with each other about beliefs, because ultimately it's up to God, it's up to Him who makes it into heaven. Our Bible tells us that when we believe in Him, that we will have everlasting life. So all this arguing about belief systems and... and now, the one thing that I do not agree with and I will not support, and that is the New Age, the, the New Faith Age movement or whatever it is, that is... To me, that is a demonic um, religion. And I'm probably going to get hate for this, but it's okay. But, but as far as like when the rapture is going to happen, whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, it doesn't matter. We need, we need to stop focusing, focusing on, on that. And stop arguing with each other. We're supposed to love each other and not try to tear each other down. I've had a couple of Christians say some pretty ugly things to me. You know, because they didn't believe in what I was saying. But the one thing that I know that I'm not is a false prophet or a false teacher. I don't, I don't try to tell things say things that are not true trust me i i prefer to not go to hell over something that i just made up in my head and i know when i posted my rapture dream i got some pretty ugly um comments in there uh, from other christians which was you know in a way it surprised me but then again it, it didn't surprise me so all I'm saying is, Christians, please stop trying to tear each other down. You know, we're supposed to be lifting each other up and loving each other and trying to help each other. Not not making each other feel like we're not worthy of God. And that's that's the one thing that I have noticed. And it, it bothers me. I, I have to pray about it every time I see it. And I'm like, Lord, why are these Christians acting like this? Why? We're supposed to be helping each other, not tearing each other down. Ultimately, the Lord will deal with those who are not teaching the right doctrine. Ultimately, the Lord... Now, yes, we are called to call to um, beware of false prophets and teachers and, you know, just as they call, as the Bible says... Uh, wolves and sheep's clothing yes we have to be aware of that but that doesn't mean tear them down that doesn't mean criticize them and say mean things it just means stay away from it just get away from it don't listen to it but what i see is people arguing things and people like getting on there saying awful things it's if you see a false prophet you know, it's okay to warn people, but don't talk about them as, and because truthfully, you don't really, no one knows which, where our hearts lie with God. Like each individual has their own relationship with God and it is not our place to determine whether or not that person goes to heaven or hell. That is God's determination. What we should be focused on is our Lord's coming. And we should be focused on, you know, keeping our own lamps burning and our own oil full. Because just as the Pharisees in the Bible, you know, they were hypocrites because they were judging others for things that they were doing that were against their religion. But yet they were sinners too. 
And that's why Jesus pointed it out to them that, hey, you know, you're a sinner too. Same thing with the story where the woman was um, found guilty of adultery. And they all wanted to stone her to death. And Jesus said, let the first one, let the first one cast the first stone who, who has not sinned. So basically he was saying that no one, no one is sinless. And that's the reason why every single one of those people put their stone down and walked away because they knew that they are also sinners. Every person in this world is a sinner. There is nobody that's perfect. And if you claim to be perfect, you're a liar. We all fall short of the glory. But it's all, it's, it's up to us to encourage each other and to help each other not to hurt each other i've learned real quick god has really shown me that yes we need to be aware of things and you know we need to warn others when there are faults like i can give you a few kenneth copeland joel alstein um What's that woman one um Joyce Myers you know a lot of them are false teachers and well a lot of them are about money and we all know what the bible says about money money is the root of all evil but based on their teachings and based on things that they say you know they are not people that I would follow I don't listen to them. But I'm not going to go around talking bad about them either. Because we have to love them just as much as we love. You know, even though they're like Kenneth Copeland, he creeps me out. But I still love him because he is, he is a human being. And we are to love our neighbor and our enemies. But I don't agree with their teachings and so therefore I don't listen to them. But just to go on there and, and just deliberately comment on somebody's video or post, you know, saying ugly things. I just, I just don't see where that's even necessary. You know, if you don't believe in what they believe in, don't watch it. Don't listen to it. You know, um, I just believe that we just need to help each other. This is a, a time a time where we are living in chaotic times and we need each other. We need to help each other. And I'm I'm not going to sit here and tear no one down. If I see someone that's a false prophet or a false teacher, I will leave leave that video or ignore what I'm listening to because I know it's not of God. And the, only, and the thing that we need to do is we need to pray for those people. We need to pray for the people who are, are falling away. You know, the Bible says there will be a falling away. So we need to, fall, we need to uh, pray for these people that are falling away. Well, thanks guys for listening to me. I know this was, I did not intend for this video to be an hour long. <laughs> My phone storage is probably going to be half gone now. But um, I just wanted to get my message out and just tell you a little bit about me. And hopefully this will help somebody. I hope that, you know, somebody will be encouraged by this. You know, like I said, I don't know if it's from God. I only, I'm only telling you the dreams that I've had dreams that I've never had before and up until now so just just keep that in mind that I didn't always have these type dreams sorry guys <laughs> my husband just walked in okay well I'm going to close this video now um I hope that you are encouraged and I hope that everyone has a, a blessed night and I'll see you soon in the air.
my fellow brothers and sisters. God bless.